Hello and welcome to One and All, to this second video in the series on the introduction to the four velocity and four momentum of a photon. Now in this second video, we'll work through a detailed argument showing how the four momentum of photon is used to describe its four velocity, focusing on the consistency of the treatment of both special relativity and general relativity. So let's make a start. All right. Um, Perhaps I'll remove that after all. All right, so the four momentum, P contravariant index mu, P mu, of a photon in special relativity has the following components in the time component E on C, and then in the spatial uh, section in the spatial components, we have the three momentum, P1, P2, P3, or the spatial momentum. Uh, we can write this and you'll see in some sources, some textbooks and elsewhere, E on C, comma, uh, the spatial momentum part as a bold, representing a vector in bold, or also you'll see this form here where you have an arrow above it indicating the vector for the spatial part. So um, they're the three common forms you'll see it represented as. I mean, it, it can also be P mu and then next to the basis E subscript mu covariant component mu, it could be written in that form. Um, and then each of the uh, uh, basis vectors expanded out and so on, you could do it that way as well. I often do it that way on this channel, but I thought I'd just show you these representations here, which are also very common in textbooks and elsewhere. E is the energy of the photon, P with the arrow above is a spatial momentum or the P vector in bold here. Uh, C is the speed of light. Now, for a photon, we know that E is the magnitude of the three momentum times the speed of light. Now, this reflects the fact that the photon is massless and the relation between energy and momentum is purely proportional. Uh, no mass term. I remember the energy momentum relation in going back a couple of videos. Uh, when you set the M part there to zero, remember E was uh, P squared, C squared, plus m squared times c to the power of four. Well, if you set m to zero, that second term drops off and you're left with just e squared is p squared. Uh, that's the magnitude of the three momentum times c. Um, and if you uh, uh, take the square root of both sides, you get e equals pc. All right, next one. Move on. So energy momentum of photons. So since photons travel at speed of light c, their energy e can be related to the frequency nu by the formula e equals h nu, Planck's constant. The photon's momentum, three momentum p, uh, is given by mod p is e on c equals h nu on c. Uh, the photon's four momentum can then be written as p mu is this component, the time component here, e nu on c, and then here e nu on c with k hat, where k hat is the unit vector in the direction of the photons travel. All right, another way of representing it. Okay, so the affine parameter and four velocity. So for massive particles, the four velocity is derived from the derivative of the four position with respect to the proper time tau. That's for particles with mass. When we say massive particles, we mean particles with mass. But for photons, the concept of proper time tau does not exist because they travel along null geodesic, G6. Instead, we use an affine parameter, lambda, um, the sum by which we parameterize the path x as a function of lambda. Okay, so that's the curved world line, the path along which it travels. So we use lambda to describe the photon's world line. So x mu of lambda. For photons, the form momentum is tangent to the photon's world line. And we can define the four velocity of a photon then as, since it's tangent to the world line, x mu as a function of lambda, the affine parameter, some parameter by which we describe the path that follows. Then u mu is dx mu d lambda. All right. You've seen that many times before in videos on this channel. Now, since the four momentum is parallel to the four velocity, they point in the same direction, they are parallel to each other, the two are related by, or can be related by, P mu is E on C times U mu, all right, because where E is the energy of the photon. So the four momentum is this constant times the four velocity. 
why is that? Well, let's make an argument for that. So just remind ourselves, P mu, the components of the momentum are E on C times U mu, the components of the forward velocity. So this is analogous to, for the case of particles with mass, P mu is M times U mu for massive particles, see? And we see here that P is proportional, the forward momentum is proportional to the forward velocity, all right? Okay, and the constant of proportionality in the case for particles with mass is m. So we could write, make an argument that u is then from here, is c on e, this constant, times the form momentum. So for the photon, this means that the forward velocity is proportional to the direction of the form momentum. You expected that to be. As, as we saw in the previous video, there's a diagram there showing the forward velocity to the world line in special relativity, and the forward momentum will point in the same direction. They're just multiples of each other because they are parallel to each other, but they differ by some scalar, scalar factor. Now, what form does the forward velocity u mu of the photon take? And that's the next bit we're going to focus on. Well, let's start with p mu is e on c, p with the, tilt, with the uh, arrow above, with the three momentum and mod p, uh, the ma magnitude of the three momentum, sorry, is e on c. All right, so the magnitude squared of the four momentum, that's p subscript mu times p contravariant uh, index mu, is this dotted with this. Okay, which when we calculate that out, we get minus uh, remember here with that lowering of the index, we get the negative because we're in special relativity here. And when we, and the metric of special relativity, the signature I use on this channel and, and the only signature I use on this channel is minus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. So the time component has a minus one there. So we end up with a minus one when we lower the index here. So we have here in this vector, minus E on C and then the three momentum components and p mu is e on c three momentum components this just just this one from here so carrying out the um multiplication here scalar multiplication um the dot product here we get minus e squared on c squared plus p dot p minus e squared on c squared plus the magnitude squared of the three momentum and as we saw earlier this is um magnitude squared will be e squared on c squared so that goes straight in there where this is that gives us minus e squared on c squared plus e squared on c squared which is zero so the magnitude squared of the four momentum for a photon is zero it's null just like with the four velocity it travels a null geodesic it is tangent to a null geodesic so it's magnitude squared we expect to be zero just as the um four velocity is also null for a photon all right, so that suggests we have for the four velocity, the magnitude squared of the four velocity, we have this, this multiplied by this, and which is c squared on e squared here. Um, and we've already seen on the previous slide this product, which is minus e squared on c squared plus e squared on c squared. All right, now before I send that all to zero, which it is, multiply through by the this inverted uh, factor here, c squared on e squared, and we're going to have minus one plus one is zero. All right, or we should say, um, you could write that as one squared plus one squared if you wanted, and the reason for that is this in turn suggests to us the form of u mu as being u mu is one and u hat. All right, now, u hat dotted with itself will give us one squared because u hat is a unit vector. So dotted with itself is one squared. So the magnitude of the unit vector is one. When we dot the two unit vectors together, we get one. So we get, um, uh, we get here, this is minus one squared plus one squared is zero. All right. Um, yeah, or, all right, so that suggests the form then of our four velocity, its components are one and a unit vector in the spatial part, pointing in the direction of motion, of course. So let's use an example of this in uh, Minkowski space time. So working through a simple example, a photon is moving in the plus x direction, so it's gonna make our unit vector in that direction easy. 
in flat Minkowski space time in special relativity. So the, the photons form momentum P mu is H nu, that's energy over C. And in the X direction, remember, um, this will just be H nu over C in the X direction for the spatial part, where the photon has momentum only in the X direction. So we have the time component and the X direction. And when we go over, what we end up is the affine parameterization of photons world line gives the fall velocity is proportional to the form momentum. So we use the relation u mu is c on e p mu, where u mu is, in this case, 1, 1. All right. This clearly satisfies uh, u, the magnitude squared is giving us minus 1 squared because if we take this and use the uh, Minkowski metric to lower the index to get this u covariant index mu here. This will become a minus one here. This will remain plus. The zeros are unaffected. Uh, and so you end up with minus one squared or minus one times plus one plus one times one, which is minus one squared plus one squared, which is zero. All right, so the magnitude squared of the four velocity for this photon is zero which is what you expect because it's traveling on a null geodesic, it's following a light-like path, as it must because it's light. Hence, we can represent the four velocity of a photon in terms of its four momentum as u mu is c on e p mu. All right. Now, in general relativity, the same ideas hold, but the geometry of space-time is curved. The photon still travels along a null geodesic and its form momentum and fall velocity are related in a similar way, but the coordinates are influenced by the space-time curvature. So geodesic equation for photon and curved space-time, the motion of the photon is governed by the geodesic equation here. Lambda is the affine parameter along the null geodesics and the Christoffel symbols of the second kind here uh, describe the curvature of space-time. Now, we don't need to go into that here, but the form momentum P mu of the photon still satisfies this form here. All right, and the null condition, um, this, the magnitude squared, is zero, holds even in curved space time. Photon still, whether it's in flat Minkowski space time or in curved space time, still travels null geodesics. Um, and just to give another example. As an example, let's consider a photon moving in Schwarzschild space time around a spherical mass. The Schwarzschild metric is given by this object here. For a photon travelling radially, the null condition ds squared equals zero applies, and we can solve for the trajectory using the geodesic equations we did on the previous slide. Um, well, we didn't solve it, but we just showed its form. The form momentum Schwarzschild coordinates uh, will satisfy the magnitude squared of the form momentum will be this. Now, we don't have the flat space-time Minkowski metric. We now have the curved space-time metric g mu nu. And these uh, terms on the diagonal there, for the, at least for the Schwarzschild case, won't be um, constant ones. They'll be uh, functions of the coordinates. Um, this can be happily com uh, explicitly computed in, in terms of the Schwarzschild metric. This gives a description of how the photon's energy and momentum evolve as it moves through curved space time. All right, I hope that helps. Um, most important, is you just remember that the four velocity then has some form of one in the time component and then a unit vector in the uh, spatial direction, right? Now, if you're going to restrict motion to the x-axis, then you could have one in the time component and one in the x direction because the magnitude of the whole thing must give you zero. Okay, the magnitude squared, I should say. All right. Well, I hope everyone that's helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and uh, I hope you found the video informative in some way and that if possible, you will, if you could, please um, click the like button and subscribe, if you will. I'd greatly appreciate that. All right, wish everyone well. Um, have a good day or evening, wherever you are in the world. And uh, best wishes to you all. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye.